Google's approach to smartphones has always been unconventional. The Pixel series is less about the chips and bits that are under the hood and more about what the phone can actually do for you. If you view the Pixel 4 in terms of its spec sheet and price tag alone, you might think these are not particularly compelling phones. But these are Pixels. You're buying them for things like a slick software experience, fast updates, and a magical camera. In that sense, the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL deliver on the same promise that every other device in the series. Yet at the same time, the Pixel 4's greatest weaknesses are rooted in hardware fumbles. And three years on from the first Pixels, that's a hard pill to swallow. So if you couldn't already tell, this video, like these phones, is a bit of a mixed bag. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is our review of the Google Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL. Let's start with something I really love about these phones. Google's absolutely nailed the design of the Pixel 4 series. The old two-tone Pixel design language is gone, and instead Google has gone all in on matte, assuming you go for the vastly superior white and orange versions anyway. Between the grippy sidewalls and the luxuriously soft matte back, again, assuming you go for the orange or white, which you absolutely should, the Pixel 4 is the antidote to the shiny, slippery fingerprint magnets you'll see from other manufacturers. It's crafted from metal and glass, but neither the back nor the sides really feel like you'd expect them to. In fact, these are probably the least fingerprinty phones I've used in years. We'll see how well the matte finish lasts over time in terms of dings and scratches, but for now, I'm enjoying the radically different aesthetic of these phones. Sure, it is a rounded rectangle with a big square camera bump around the back, but in person the feel is very different to Apple's iPhone 11. If for some reason you do want a glossy back, then the black Pixel 4 will have you covered, otherwise the brilliant white and orange flavours will give your phone a look and feel quite unlike anything else. The speed and performance of the Pixel 4s is mostly solid. It's mostly the usual stuff you'd expect from a late 2019 Android phone, Snapdragon 855 plus 6 gigs of RAM. 6 is a little on the low side when most rivals are offering 8 or even 12, but I've yet to run into any multitasking issues like I've done the Pixel 3 XL. With Google's speedy software, a fast refresh rate, and plenty of CPU grunt, Pixel 4 is among the fastest Android phones out there. Hopefully, unlike some previous Pixels, it'll stay that way. And although it's not exactly perfect, I am slowly coming to terms with Android 10's new swipey gesture navigation, the physics of which have been tweaked in these new phones. What's more problematic is the mere 64 gigs of base storage in both Pixel 4 models, when pretty much everyone except Apple offers more at this price point. Most Android phone makers pack in 128 or even 256 in their flagships. So far, after a week, I'm almost at 50% used on this 64GB Pixel 4 XL, and the storage constraint pretty much guarantees they'll have to clear out photos every couple of months. Worse still, the free full-sized backup promotion for Google Photos extended to previous Pixel owners doesn't apply to the Pixel 4. Despite the hardware disappointment of the Pixel 4's internal storage, Google is highlighting a trio of key hardware upgrades around the front of the new Pixels. The first is the new 90Hz panel, which allows the Pixel to ramp up the display smoothness in certain content, much like the OnePlus 7 Pro and 7T series. Second, the new face unlock system is the new way to unlock your Pixel. Fast, convenient, and extremely easy to set up. And lastly, the much-hyped Motion Sense feature brings Google's Project Soli radar gestures to smartphones for the first time, enabling wavy gestures to control alarms and music. The face unlock setup, combined with Motion Sense, is the main reason for the Pixel 4's hefty forehead. Instead of any of the other front camera solutions we've seen, Google goes notchless with a larger top bezel. While I do miss the rear fingerprint scanner of the Pixel 3, particularly because of the handy swipe down gesture shortcut to see notifications, the Pixel 4's face unlock is spectacularly fast and reliable, as well as being easier and less repetitive to set up than a fingerprint scanner. You only have one face, after all. I've also encountered no issues using it either in very bright or very dark environments. It's worth pointing out the Pixel 4's face unlock will still work even if your eyes are closed. That's in stark contrast to Huawei's new face unlock system in the Mate 30 Pro, which requires not only for your eyes to be open, but has an extra option to require eye contact on the screen as well. What's more, Pixel 4 owners are going to be waiting for many of the secure apps for fingerprint to be updated to fully support the Pixel's new biometrics. In many banking apps, for example, you might need to use a PIN or even a full password, which is just a bunch of extra hassle. Anyway, part of the reason the Pixel 4's face unlock is so fast is because motion sensors' radar magic can detect your hand approaching and activate the camera array faster. It's a fantastic use for this technology, but as for the other places it's used, well, it's not great at all. Right now, very few apps support motion sense. In Google Play Music, for example, the wave gesture to skip tracks is very finicky. It works best with your hand at a right angle to display, but even then, it's nowhere near consistent enough. Sometimes it'll be great, and then the next moment, no matter what you try, no amount of waving will make it work. 
Overall, for as much as Motion Sense influences the design of these new pixels, it feels like a spectacular feature missed right now. This was a much hyped function of the phone in the run up to launch, and now having lived with it for over a week, I have zero enthusiasm for it. The look, feel and sound of this year's pixels are better than ever. The display, while not quite as bright as Samsung's top end 60Hz panels, has pleasing colours and good daylight visibility. And it now features Google's ambient EQ technology to balance the white level of the screen to your environmental lighting for a more natural look. Plus, if you hated the 3XL's big honking notch, well obviously that's gone away giving this year's pixels a more uniform look. The stereo speakers of previous Pixel generations have also been retired, but the new bottom firing cans paired with the earpiece tweeter provide ample volume, bass and clarity. And of course these are Pixel phones, so the haptic feedback is excellent, sharp and responsive. There are nice little haptic cues for things like a successful face unlock and a drag down on the notification shade. Google's excellent software experience helps here too. The Pixel 4 builds on what we've already seen in Android 10 on earlier Pixels with more on-device smarts. The new Google Assistant runs directly on the phone itself thanks to the new Pixel Neural Core, that means it's much faster at voice recognition since nothing needs to go back to the cloud. A couple of big caveats here though, it won't work if you have a G Suite account on your device, even if your main account is a normal Google account. And right now it's only available in US English, so if you're in another region you'll have to change your language to use it. The look of the Pixel UI hasn't changed a bunch, but there's now a loadout of new live wallpapers plus some classics from the Pixel back catalogue. There are new theming options too, giving Pixel owners the chance to change fonts, icon frames and accent colours, and the new Pixel Safety app handles your emergency contacts and medical info, and controls the new car crash detection feature that's on offer in some countries. Live transcription is a feature that was teased as part of Android 10, but it's live now on the Pixel 4 for the first time. That's thanks to the same on-device voice recognition magic that enables the new Google Assistant. It's found in the volume menu and works with literally anything that makes sound on your device, though once again it's US English only at the moment. It's a huge deal for anyone with hearing difficulties or anyone that just wants to watch a video without turning up the volume. This tech is also put to use in the Recorder app, which can automatically transcribe speech, again only in US English. And sure, most Pixel 4 owners won't ever need to use this, but for people like journalists or college students it could be a game changer. Only issue to be aware of is both the Recorder and live transcription can be pretty battery intensive even on the Pixel 4 XL. Through a 40 minute meeting you might expect to burn around 10% of your battery. And that brings us to the Pixel 4's biggest overall weakness, battery life. A lot of people saw this coming when the battery specs first leaked, but yeah, turns out 2800mAh doesn't get you very far on a flagship phone with all these whiz-bang features. Even the larger Pixel 4 XL, which I've been using for most of our review period, fails to improve on the battery life of last year's 3 XL, and with heavier use can deplete alarmingly quickly. With moderate use and some features like smooth display and motion sense turned off, I can coax 5 hours of screen on time out of the 4XL over around 15 hours of total use. But if you want to use these features there is an undeniable battery hit. Battery anxiety has definitely been a thing for me in my week or so with these two phones. Hopefully some of this stuff can be addressed in a software update, though I'm not holding my breath. Meanwhile, both Pixels support 10 watt wireless charging or 18 watt wired charging over USB PD. 18 watts looks pretty sluggish next to the 35 or 45 watt offerings from OnePlus and Samsung. Nevertheless, it's not really slow enough to complain about. And when it comes to wireless charging, speed is less of a concern anyway. The Pixel camera has been the major attraction of the series since it debuted back in 2016, and photographic excellence is now an expectation of any new Pixel. Despite the lack of an ultra-wide camera which is increasingly seen as table stakes in a flagship phone, the Pixel 4's dual rear cameras nevertheless knock it out of the park. There was one annoying downgrade this year though, with Google moving to a single front-facing camera from the dual cameras of the Pixel 3. The 90 degree lens splits the difference between the Pixel 3's 75 and 97 degree lenses, and the quality is still superb, though oddly autofocus has been removed. Presumably there just wasn't enough space up there, but this is a bit of a bummer for people like vloggers who might want to use that autofocus feature. Nevertheless, the rear camera setup which combines a 12 megapixel standard shooter with a 16 megapixel telephoto is a phenomenal performer. Photos regularly have more fine detail and improved colour clarity compared to the Pixel 3, as well as improvements to the clarity of night shots in night sight mode. Everything you loved about earlier Pixel's cameras is better than ever in the Pixel 4. With time and patience you can even take advantage of the new astrophotography feature on a clear night to balance a view of the cosmos with more earthly scenery. And since there's a telephoto lens now, the Pixel can zoom further than ever before. Technically it's only a 2x lens, but remember Google has its super rare zoom magic from the Pixel 3, which uses the movement of the lens to capture more detail than you'd get from a straight up digital crop. 
All of this, combined with data from two lenses, lets the Pixel 4 produce surprisingly good-looking shots at 3 times or 5 times, along with legible pictures in night sight mode all the way up to 8 times. Having recently used the Huawei Mate 30 Pro's 3x optical zoom, I have to say the Pixel 4 matches and sometimes even beats the performance of Huawei's offering. And I almost always prefer the colours in a Pixel shot compared to what I get out of a Samsung or Huawei phone anyway. Google also takes advantage of the telephoto for even better portrait shots. Edge detection is much improved, especially around hair and glasses, and even though the Pixel 3 took great portraits, the 4 is undeniably a marked improvement. Pixel camera app has been overhauled too, with predictive prompts to help you take better photos. For example, if you're taking a selfie, you might see prompts to go for a higher angle. In everyday photography, framing hints will help you take a shot that's level with the ground or the horizon. Plus, when you tap to focus now, not only can you control the overall exposure, but you can also raise or lower the shadow exposure. It's really useful in nighttime or high contrast shots. So once again, the main differentiator for a Pixel phone is its camera. Ultimately, I'm not too disappointed about the lack of an ultra-wide option, so good is everything else this camera setup can pull off. The Pixel 4 and 4 XL are both phones you have to compromise with. You simply have to sacrifice long battery life, and you're going to overpay for the specs on offer. In return, you get killer cameras, excellent hardware build, and really good software. It's definitely not a slam dunk though. Battery life is important, as is value for money. In terms of the former, the gulf between Pixel 4 battery life and what you get with, say, a Note 10 Pro or Mate 30 Pro is palpable. At the same time, it's disappointing that the new Google Assistant is so limited at launch, being available only in one market, and at the time of recording, unavailable if you're also using a G Suite account on your phone. Motion Sense also feels like a huge swing and a miss. The failure rate is too high, and the limited app support means it fails to justify the enormous impact it has on the design of these phones. Once again, it comes down to hardware and software. The ingredients for Google's secret sauce have always been software smarts rather than hardware grunt. Sometimes, as with the Pixel camera, that pays off handsomely. In other areas though, like the battery, it's easy to point to a deficiency in the spec sheet that makes the Pixel 4 far less competitive in a really important aspect of the smartphone experience. There are still things that only Google can do in a smartphone, and the Pixel 4 builds on those unique strengths, but at its heels the competition continues to nip. Huawei's cameras can beat Google's in some areas, and Apple offers a more diverse triple lens setup with similar performance, and both companies are getting better at camera performance quicker than Google's getting better at battery life. If it continues at its current pace, Google risks squandering its lead in computational photography and falling even further behind on battery. Diehard Pixel fans will still love the Pixel 4. Hell, I, Android nerd that I am, really like these phones. Having such lackluster battery life even after paying almost a thousand US dollars though is a tough ask, and the same goes for the anemic base storage, even if it is paired with an excellent camera and unique AI smarts. After all, does the icing matter at all if you don't get the cake right? Nevertheless, if you are a Pixel fan who can deal with what is a quirky, imperfect pair of phones, you will undoubtedly find plenty to like. That's it for now, check out our full written review on AndroidCentral.com and subscribe so you don't miss our future coverage here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.